Martin, looking at Europe in what is generally a risk-on environment right now, is it an interesting proposition given some of the weakness we've seen recently, fund flows coming out of equities, for example? That's right. So generally speaking, this is still a, one of the better environments for European assets because um, mostly global investors tend to be more willing to invest in European equities as in other parts of the world when we are risk on. Mm. Uh, if we are risk off, they really prefer uh, US, uh, US assets, generally speaking. Uh, having said that, we should think in the equity env uh, environment, for example, the, the, the uh, growth in earnings is so much stronger in the US, partly thanks to the tax reform, that, it's, uh, that, that we are currently overweight US equities and we're a bit more cautious for the European backdrop. Also, we, because there is a shift in the contribution to global growth that we've seen uh, compared to last year, where now the US is probably closer to 3%, whereas Europe will probably come in nearer to 2%, maybe even slightly below. And that, in terms of an earnings driver, is speaking in favor of uh, the US and, and less in favor of Europe at this point. Right. So while you favor the US now, what could be the catalyst to make you shift that stance and be more positive on Europe? Well, to some extent, it could actually be some of the political issues being sorted out. And that is, of course, uh, the Brexit and the open questions in that regard. We secondly have the question of uh, the Italian budget coming up and some uncertainty about the euro crisis being back. I, I don't think it's back. It, it, it has never gone away. Actually, it's mm -hmm. never been away. So it's still there and it, it needs to be solved. And of course, the, um, the, the, the talks between the German and the French government in, in order to solve uh, the euro crisis or to make uh, the European uh, integration story more sustainable, they could, de they could actually be a, a catalyst to, to, to make investors uh, think more positively about European equities. I mean, about European equities, and the question is now, what do you do now that cash actually has a value? What is a chief investment strategist? Do you have an asset allocation, or do you have a blend or a mixture you care about? Or is, is that, are, you, are you so high in the clouds you really don't care about that I need to clip a coupon this weekend? <laughs> Um, well, generally speaking, we, we still believe um, the, the, the risk on environment and, um, and the, the level of interest rate that we have still make us believe that it's, it's a good idea to be overweight uh, real assets. So, and, and on the part of our clients, we're getting a lot of demand for illiquid real assets as well. So there is a mix, and it, you know, by contrast to the past where we wouldn't think a lot about maybe real estate or other illiquid assets, we are, we are really seeing a lot of interest in that, in that part of the uh, investment spectrum. And apart from that, we're still um, overweight equities with our exposure right now being focused, as I said, on the U.S., but also still we're positive emerging markets. As we were saying earlier, emerging markets have actually become cheap. And as long as investors are looking at this bracket of countries in a very undifferentiated way, there are opportunities opening up. So this is where we are currently putting our money. I mean, putting your money comes back to, again, the value trap of emerging markets. They're not a value trap. Do I have that right? Because we were talking the other day in another interview, Martin, about EU banks as a value trap. That's to be avoided, right? Um, well, there, is, there will be lots of jitters around these sort of investments over the next couple of days and weeks, probably. Uh, but again, I think we will, we will really need to, to, to see um, some, in some countries, uh, these uh, stories will get worse before they get better. In others, we will probably see opportunities are op opening up rather soon, probably over the next couple of weeks already. So th this is, again, a question of really the, the micro cases. This is where our analysts come in. They look into the single companies, in this case the banks, and they will, they will actually give their judgment and their recommendation to the respective portfolio managers, who will then uh, decide over where it's best to, to go overweight and underweight.